Hi there, YouTube community. Dominic, the CX guy. Customer experience is our game, and we love it. And that's why we have this channel. So for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, my name is Dominic. I'm a Zendesk consultant. I've been one for the past nine years almost. Zendesk partner, worked at Zendesk, here to share some of the knowledge with you. We are a team of 12 people now, so we are, yeah, this is our, this is our business. This is our livelihood. We love what we do. And yeah, it's, yeah, we love, we love, we just love it. We just love it. <laughs> Anyways, today's topic is going to be what are Zendas forms? So we are a little bit limited by time because I have a call in about 17 minutes. So uh, I can't uh, stay there for very long. But during this time, we're going to do our best to cover everything about Zendesk form. So this is a difficult topic, but also not so difficult if you understand it. So I'm going to share some of the best practices because there's many ways to do things in Zendesk. And I'm just going to share, you know, some functionality with you. I'm going to share some of the best practices because no business is exactly the same. So every business is different. And the needs are different. So you need to apply what is best for your case, right? So the reason why, uh, yeah, we have this business and we're doing this is because, uh, yeah, we f help you find the right solutions. Before we start, please uh, like this. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Only 9% of you are subscribed to this YouTube channel. So you're getting all this content for free. Please consider subscribing. Uh, comment if you want to see some special content. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's roll. Oh, by the way, in the description, you can find a um, ebook on how to optimize your Zendesk in eight steps. You have a course for the onboarding Zendesk and how to do it professionally. And uh, it's the course that I have derived from working directly at Zendesk. So it's linked in the description. Go ahead, register. It's, uh, it's an amazing course. Okay, so what are Zendesk forms? So Zendesk forms, let's break it down. The notion of it, when what a Zendesk form is, it is a way to collect data. So collecting data, data collection, that's what we use forms for. Imagine you have, you know, you, you have your business and you want to collect data about your customers. So you run your customer service, customer support processes through Zendesk, and you want to, you know, help your customers uh, solve their issue, right? They reach out to you. They say, hey, I have a problem with your product, with your service, whatever your, your, whatever your business is about, and uh, I need your help, right? So you need to help them solve that request or get that request solved. That's what is the basics of running a successful business is, right? You know how to answer it or you don't, it doesn't matter. If you don't know, you need to ask additional data, right? It depends on the type of request. If it's a, I don't know, let's say a billing request, you need to ask, okay, give me your order number. Um, you need to ask for... Uh, I don't know, the address, you need to ask for their complete name, you need to ask for a proof of address, you need to ask for a copy of the invoice, you need to, you know, whatever is relevant to you, okay? So um, if it's a bug request, you want to ask, for example, it's a bug, right? So you'd say you have a software, you sell software, and the customer says, hey, you, I have a bug, or software is not working. You need to ask, okay, what uh, operating system are you using this on? Uh, when time of day that this happened, uh, what browser were you using? Um, let's see, what else? Um, did you try, uh, no, did you try turning it off and on? <laughs> Classic bug fixing um, issue, not issue, but uh, solving, uh, handling. So let's see, what else? Um, yeah, I need to know, yeah, give me a screenshot of what you see. Um, I don't know. Right, so you need to ask for more information. So whatever the request is about, you need to know more about that. So what do you do with that information? Right, you need to know. Um, you need to find out this information, and you need to store it in Zendesk in order to create reports. That's what you actually do, right? So this is the let's say the um, a quick rundown on what you can use the forms for. So think about it as a business owner. Think about the idea of what do I want to report on. Right, so I want to report on, um, let's say, what kind of requests come into the system, right? So billing requests, uh, product requests, product inquiries, bugs, 
uh, delivery issues, uh, I don't know, whatever it is, right? So whatever you need to tackle in order to make your product better, your product or your service, right? Because you get a ton of information if you understand exactly what's wrong, right? So you don't want to just collect or just receive tickets uh, blindly, solve them, and then, you know, have nothing, uh, no notion of how or what exactly is that you are going to solve, right? So you don't want to always start from the beginning. You don't want to always take it from zero. You want to understand some stuff that is wrong so you can fix it, right? So if you, uh, if you identify flaws in your product or in your service, you want to fix it. And how do you do that, right? You create articles on how to fix it or you ask your development team on, uh, you know, fixing it. Or if it's a I don't know, delivery issue, you ask your third party delivery company to solve that for you, right? So uh, to fix it, like, guys, you're running late. People are writing to us and saying, uh, my order is delayed or I haven't received it in two days, right? You want to pick up the phone and call your delivery company and say, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you're, you're messing up my business and you're not delivering. You're supposed to. And you said in your contract that you were going to deliver. Uh, an example. <laughs> I, I do these heartfelt things. Uh, because I get so involved in them. <clears throat> oh, we have 11 minutes left. So, uh, yeah, so hopefully this gives you some idea on how you can think about forms and how you can use them, right? So collect information on the tickets that come into the system. Collect information about the user, about the ticket, so you can solve that request. Not only just solve it blindly, but also to help you in the future to improve your product. That's the let's say the, the gist of it, the, the bottom line. So um, now that we've covered the baseline, so you use them for right understanding what kind of tickets come into the system, let's go into Zendesk and see how you can tackle that. So there are many ways of thinking about forms. And as I said, there is no one way. There is no one singular way of doing it. So let's jump in and I will go through some practices, best practices. So maybe you can, hopefully you can see my screen, right? So this is my test account. I'm going to navigate to the admin center. Woo! Sorry about that. So am I actually sharing my screen? Stop, uh, share. Yes, right? You're seeing my admin center? Good. I'm going to go to here, to, to here. I'm going to go here to objects and rules, I'm going to go to forms. So. Forms are tied in with fields, okay? So let's navigate to support. So I can, um, yeah, give you a rundown. Let's do this right now. Huh? So yeah, let's, uh, okay, let's open this one. Take it. Right, so look, on the left-hand side is our, our fields, right? So on the left-hand side is our, our uh, you can find our fields that we have created. And then here is the conversation uh, that we are having with the customer. And this is the integration that we are uh, using or productivity apps that we are installing. Conversation, and these are the ticket fields. So you can see the brand, you can see who the requester is, assignee, followers. These are all built in, right? So these are, we can't touch them so much except priority, for example. But that's optional to have or not. So now you can see, for example, this is the form, right? So the, in this case, I have three. I have amazing form, BC test form. Super duper ticket form. So if I change this to the, see, I have a different, I have different fields. I have, how can I help you? And then if I change it to amazing form, I have type of job, right? So each uh, form has different fields. So now let's go back because you've understood a little bit on how to uh, reference this in your mind, right? So now uh, it's simple, but it's also complex. <laughs> easy, but not so easy. So. These are my fields, right? So I have a list of fields, right? So that I have created for myself, I have quite a lot. Uh, and then if I go to forms, so less is more, less is more. Please understand this lesson. It's it's there for a, le for a reason. <clears throat> and you want to have things as simple as possible. You don't have to, you don't overcomplicate things. Um, as a best practice, create fields that uh, even if you use multiple forms, use the same ticket fields. Don't create a ticket field for each form. Okay, these are my forms. I have, uh, remember the t super duper ticket form, amazing form, and this one? 
Okay. Uh, only these ones are available for that brand. You can associate a ticket form with a brand. Now, let's go and add a form. So this is the admin experience. We're going to jump into the uh, user experience as well. So let's give it a name. Everything is a name. So what is this form going to be used for? Well, I'm not sure because there's many, many ways. All right, let's just do one. Let's call this one a brilliant form. Brilliant. Brilliant. Amazing. Is it editable for end users? Uh, yes, please. I want it to be available to end users. Titles shown to end users. You'll see why this matters. Uh, brilliant form for a brilliant customer. Ooh. So this is what end users will see. I don't want this to be applied to all my brands. I just want this to be applied to some of them. Look, so I am just going to select this one for this for the purpose of this demonstration, con Dominic CX. Okay, so we're uh oh six minutes. So now we're coming closer to the interesting part. So these are the two fields that are available in my form. Remember, I told you each form can have individual fields, and you should only cre you should create like uh, universal fields that can be applied to multiple brands. This is where you start adding those fields. So I have a subject, I have a description. What else do I need? Uh, all right, type of inquiry. Let's add this one. So in here, I have all my list of fields that you saw in the previous screen. I want to add, uh, what else? Issue, language, why not? Let's put passport ID. Let's put priority to, let's root cause, why not? Uh, type, no, type of ticket, text. No, let's put uh, linked data. No, calendar name. No, what else could we put in here? Booking reference. Yes, please. Let's put it. All right. So this looks decent, right? So we have we have all of these. Let's say these are relevant for me to collect information about an issue, right? So an issue that I want to uh, I want to cover. Now, you can think about forms to use for different processes that you run into your business. You can use a form for finance. You can use a form for uh, for billing. You can use a form for technical, for, let's say, technical inquiries that you can then maybe link with your Jira or whatever uh, you use for development. Uh, you can use for... Right, so I've enumerated... Uh, I've uh, uh, listed three, let's say, processes or departments that, for example, each department can have its own form. Uh, you can use, for example, different products for each um, for for each form. Because, for example, you can have product A, product B, product C, right? So each one of them has very unique, specific fields, right? Remember I told you to use fields like in a general sense? You don't have to create the same field for a different form. You always use the same one. So, for example, type of request, you would use that for any kind of form. But depends, for example, if for product A, I have a type of issue that is only specific to product A, then you do need to create a unique field for that form. But otherwise, try to keep it as broad and as general as possible. Okay, four minutes. Damn, we'll maybe not make it. All right, so this has been saved. Good, so let's go to the, uh, to the customer experience. So we've created a form. Let's take this. Open an incognito, All right? So this is our help center. Then we click submit request. Bam. Now it asks me like, which please choose an issue below. Uh-oh, lo and behold, right? The three forms that I mentioned earlier and this one that we've just added, brilliant form from brilliant customer, right? So I have selected this and lo and behold, all the fields that I have uh, that I have added to that form, right? Makes sense. I am. I can collect information about this specific process, this specific product, this specific service I'm offering, whatever it is. Very important. And why, for example, you would want to use individual forms. Number one reason is because look at this. This form has a unique ID. Look, this is the its unique ID, right? This one, 860. And then if I choose this one, boom. Different one, 691. So different ID, different form. And if I choose this one, boom, different ID. 
Now, you can use this for different marketing purposes and you can include communication to say, hey, if you have a request about this specific product, go to this form, which is unique and you end up exactly on this page. The user doesn't have to select the issue type or the product type or the service type, right? So which that's exactly why you need to think about this. Now, um, look, now you, there's a different way of doing it, right? So you have a unique field or not field, but uh, form for, as I said, a product, a service, uh, a process, a department. Now, there's another way of doing it. So I have conditional fields, that they're, as they're called. So I go here, I go to conditions, and I have conditions for agents, and I have conditions for end users. Conditions for agents are exactly what they, what they are for end users. So I'm just going to do for end users. I am probably going to disconnect and connect again after I have my meeting So to finish this off. So let's add a condition. You can copy whatever you created in uh, agents interface, but that's not the point here. So conditional fields are a way for you to display some fields that are just relevant to one, for example, one uh, option that the user chooses in this form. So you can use one form for all your processes. So let's look how that, let's see how that looks like. So add a condition. So when filled out this field, for example, type of inquiry, and now let's choose this one. For example, billing, when billing is chosen in the dropdown, then show these fields. Issue, uh, is it required? Yes. Then it required to submit. Then let's put passport ID and then let's put language. And that's it. And this language is uh, also mandatory. Add, save. So this is what it looks like. Okay, now let's go back to the user experience. Uh, guide. All right. Open this and the user experience. Submit request. Brilliant customer. Boom. You see, I have less options in here. So if I choose, for example, billing, boom, I see all the other options. You see what I'm getting with this? So you can create conditional fields depending on product, depending on department, depending on uh, service that you that you offer. Right, so you can only use one form in this case, which is great because it's simpler and you want simpler. That's that's amazing. But you wouldn't have this unique ID, for example. User would always have to, even if they're, for example, looking for a product, product sorry, product, and they're clicking submit request, they'd have to choose the product. So you can't send them directly to this B2B automatically completed. So this is the downside of using just one form, which I, I actually prefer having one form because then it's harder maintenance, more stuff to do. I have to run. So um, yeah, I will uh, see you later. I hope this actually has been useful. Uh, this is all that I had for now. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.